sige mo kung ako ikipahulat charot okay all right sige so uh we'll continue um with our lecture all right so for this part uh dears what we're going to discuss now are your uh diagnostic procedures okay in parasitology okay all right sige all right so again uh in our continuation uh for this lecture uh we're going now to discuss again the diagnostic part you no know, diagnostic procedures in parasitology starting first with the samples that we can receive for parasite examination and the different samples uh, and procedures to examine uh, these samples all right so of course we'll start first with your stool specimens now of course uh, your stool best friend ng lahat yes the second year at nagbabalik ngayon sa internship okay because of course your stool is considered to be the most commonly submitted sample for examination of parasites why because the largest number of parasites affecting man can be recovered from stool because majority of the parasites affecting man can uh uh, sorry, majority of the parasites affecting man affect the intestines, no? Or the intestinal tract. Hence, it's only reasonable that uh, the stool is most commonly submitted, okay? Because again, a lot of parasites can be recovered from your stool sample. Now, again, um, in the stool um, examination, the most commonly performed procedure is your ONP examination or OVA and parasites. So you may receive this uh, request form when you uh, become interns in the hospitals, Puhon, next sem, uh, na I request for ONP, no? So what it means is, uh, ONP means ovine parasite. So that translates to uh, making a, a fecal smear, no? From your sample, okay? All right, that's ONP uh, procedure, most commonly performed procedure uh, for stool specimen, okay? Now we go now to the examination of your stool sample, starting first with, of course, uh, stool collection uh, procedures. Now for the stool collection procedures, it consists of three specimens, no? Three specimens collected every other day, all right? Or uh, three specimens within 10 days, no more than 10 days, okay? So why, um, why should we collect three specimens and why within 10 days? Because again, this would ensure that we can recover, you know, all the parasites that can be found in the stool sample or all the parasites that are affecting the uh, patient, okay? All right, and 10 days because you're, especially for intestinal protozoa, your intestinal protozoa are not released or are not shed in your stool samples on a daily basis. So pretty every other day. That's why uh, that 10 day period or duration of 10 days will already ensure, no, or it would give you a higher chance, likelihood of recovering these uh, parasites, especially the intestinal protozoa. Okay, all right, again. Now, when the patient is suspected of having amoebiasis, the number of specimens, uh, stool samples, that can be requested is up to at least six, no? Or up to six specimens. Still the same reason, rationale, for you to recover good the parasite, no? Um, especially if the infection is still starting, no? Or light, low uh, numbers pa lang of parasite um, is in the stool sample, okay? All right, so it would be best to uh, retrieve specimens uh, that many, many specimens, so especially again for amoebiasis, six specimens. Okay. Now, again, for patients after therapy, no, if a patient um, is undergoing therapy for amoebiasis, you should check the stool three to four weeks after therapy, uh, for protozoan infection pala, sorry. So three to four weeks after therapy. And for tenia, if the patient is undergoing therapy for tenia, the infection, five to six weeks after therapy. So why should you check it? Of course, to check um, if the patient is responding to treatment and to check if the treatment is working properly, okay? Because if after therapy, after mga three to four weeks or five to six weeks, you can still see protozoans, uh, protozoan trophozoites or cysts in your stool sample or tapeworm, not tenia proglotids, then that could mean that the therapy did not work, okay? Wala ni, wala ni gana ang tambal, okay? Uh, so that will give your doctor, that will give the doctor an idea on what intervention to interventions to do next what treatment to explore no because again this particular treatment is not working Ganner. okay so here is an example of your stool container diba? again um so right as you can see there's a spoon at the center so the purpose of the spoon dears is uh, okay the purpose of the spoon is for uh collection no? or for sampling, for getting the sample of stool that is needed for examination. So example, diba, if there's already stool here, diba, ang spoon kay mo uh, mutarok sa center or kung asa mangani. And after um, 
siya mutarok sa center, no? Na ay stool na mabilin, no? There's two sample that will remain on the on the spoon. And this will now serve as your sample that you will use for examination, for making of your smears and other procedures. Okay? All right. So since we're talking about your container, again, for container of stool samples, your container should be clean, no? It should be suitable, wide mouth, uh, like a plastic container. And according to Bailey, um, it should it you could use waxed cardboard box or a Matchbox. The important thing is it has a tight fitting lid and it is also wide mouth and clean. No, as per experience in our lab classes and even in routine uh, laboratories and in hospitals that you may um, be assigned in, ang ilang ginagamit is katong plastic. No, they use the plastic container similar to the containers of gravy, de ba <laughs> sa mga restaurants? Yes, so muti lang ginagamit. So that is okay, de ba? Because again, ang important is there is a tight fitting lid to avoid spillage, okay, and also to contain the moisture with in the container lang din, okay? Wide mouth, again, to facilitate your collection, okay? So that it will help you in collecting the sample. All right. Now, um, again, that's an example. That's just a joke, diba? What's important is tight-fitting lid. And please take note, ang label, yes, important ang label. Of course, you're all interns na, so you already know how important labels are. So, nako. So, <laughs> if you are in an unlabeled relationship or unlabeled na mga something dyan, nako. Medtech ka ba ba? Charot. Karapat dapat ka ba magiging medtech intern? Joke lang, okay? Nanggaling pa talaga sa akin. Coming from me, charot. Like, anyway, again, labels should be placed on the body, body of the container, okay? And not on the cover, okay? Why? Because again, if it's on the cover, if ma-misplace ang cover, then it could lead na to um, false um, identifying, no? Identification of the sample. Could lead to erroneous results. So it should be part, uh, it should be placed or sticked on the body of the container. Okay, all right. Now, um, if the patient is ingesting or is taking some substances or medications such as these, no, Miner mineral oil, uh, bismuth, antibiotics, anti-malarial agents, and non-absorbable antidiarrheal preparations, these uh, substances can impede, no, or can make the detection of your intestinal protozoa difficult. So if the patient is taking these substances, then collection of your stool sample should be delayed, no, for a week to several weeks, okay? so. This will um this is stipulated in a man in the history of the patient, no? Or if the doctor mismo ang nag, nag note na okay, the patient is um taking this, taking that. Okay. Uh, and negotiate sa boards, no, not in our time, previous board exam. Uh, ang question is which of the following can impede um the de uh, detection of intestinal protozoa? A mineral oil, B, baby oil, <laughs> C, uh something, D, and none of the above. So of course, press the buzzer and answer natin is mineral oil. Okay, please take note. All right, ayan. Now um example, if the patient is taking barium, no? it should be delayed, specimen collection should be delayed for 5 to 10 days. And if it's for antibiotics, for up to 2 weeks. Because again, these substances can affect your protozoa and can make your um, examination and recovery of protozoa difficult. Okay. All right. Now, for routine stool examination, the required amount, no, Acquire, required amount of stool for submission is again thumb size, no, the size of your thumb for formed stools, and about five to six tablespoons or ten ml, no, ten ml for your liquid stools. Now, it's not necessary. It's not necessary, talaga, to measure <laughs> your stool samples, especially if it's liquid, no. So imagine, na, um, assign ka clinical microscopy na section sa lab, and then nakadawat ka liquid na stool, and then <laughs> Gamit ka graduated syringe, mo gi measure if it's really 10 ml before you accept the specimen. So mas shook na na mo hang section head or metric dito na. Gawin sa mangka, di ba? So katakos takos kag stool dito. <laughs> Luda ka ayo, okay? So it's not necessary that you measure talaga na you like put it in a graduated cylinder or not. Just estimate lang, okay? By the looks of it, no. Okay, that's okay. That's that would suffice. All right? Okay. And again, it's not it's not necessary na too much, no? Naiubayan na ako yung makita yung mga posts sa Facebook na garapun yun or like as in puno kaayo, no? So please instruct your patients uh, properly for collection na thumb size lang kung form stool and kung liquid 10 ml. Ayaw pughut da. <laughs> Ayaw ipabutang ang whole <laughs> stool niya. So example, if formed ang stool, like tubol, katujung whole tubol, ayaw, ayaw po. Please instruct your patients properly, ha? That's part of your role as an intern then, as an, and as a med tech, okay? Uh, pr proper patient instruction and collection, okay? All right. As in, my gosh, okay. All right. So that's the only required amount of stool. Thumb sized, five to six tablespoons of watery stool. Okay. All right. Ayan. Now we go now to the consistency of your mga stool samples. Now, uh, the different descriptions, no, and their mga 
like itong soft, semi-formed, hard, uh, ganun. We'll discuss that in clinical microscopy na lang, dears. All right? So we'll focus on, we'll discuss that there. Okay. But for parasitology, um, for liquid specimens, again, you should examine it within 30 minutes of passage na siya, dears. 30 minutes of passage. Meaning, if nalibang ang patient karun, dapat within 30 minutes ma-examine itong sample. Okay? It's not within 30 minutes of delivery to lab, okay? Within 30 minutes of passage, okay? And if it's semi-formed, within one hour of passage, okay? Why? Because what we're really looking after are your trophozoites. Or what we're after are your trophozoites, protozoan trophozoites. Because if you can remember, trophozoites, protozoan trophozoites are very sensitive. Once they're outside the body, no? Um, they cannot last long, no? They can disintegrate rapidly. So that's why we need to uh, process liquid specimens, semi-formed specimens immediately or as soon as possible, 30 minutes, one hour. Why? Because again, of trophozoites. And trophozoites, they can be recovered in this consistency of stool, liquid semi-formed. Because your trophozoites, they like mga liquid environment. They, they like the fluid environment. Because your trophozoites are the motile, uh, uh, motile form of your protozoa, diba? So they like to swim, swim, ganun. So, um, they need or they like the fluid, liquid environment. Okay? Uh, since uh, formed stools do not contain, less likely contain trophozoites na because wala na fluid, no, it's really hard or compact na siya, then your examination can be delayed even after 24 hours of collection. Okay? Ayan. So, again, liquid specimens ang atong uh, dapat jud um, as soon as possible. Okay? So, kung liquid, uh, the Proto the parasite that we are looking after are your protozoan trophozoites or what we are after if liquid specimen, protozoan trophozoites. Kung formed, what we can see are cysts, okay? And soft, ayan, lumabas sa pretest, both cysts and trophozoites. Also, a recall from the board exam, very, very uh, common dyan question or bago na kayo na question uh, ni Gawas last January and March of 2021 na board exam. Yes, this was a question. Uh, from which, uh, from which, Consistency of stool, can we recover both cyst and trophozoites? A, hard, B, soft, and nana. And then another question, what can we recover from soft stool? Letter A, cyst, B, trophozoites, uh, C, both, o, di ba? So two questions na dayon, two points na ka, okay? So ayan, soft, okay, both cyst and trophozoites. But according to the book of Garcia, no, na para, ang uh, yang ibo dito kay soft, and then in parentheses, semi-formed, okay? So uh, if... If mo ask mo, sir, if mo gawas ng dua ka choices, unsa kung i-answer, prayer na lang, okay? <laughs> joke. Okay, prayer, prayer, a good joke. Ang answer is your soft. Answer, answer gap on your soft because ang soft, gi ka sa CDC, okay, good. Uh, gi specify, gi nila na soft, okay? All right, soft. Both cysts and trophozoites. And any consistency are your helminth eggs and larvae, okay? So, diba, we all crave for consistency din naman, okay? So, <laughs> we strive for consistency. Any consistency, o oh, diba? Ayan, okay. So, be helminth eggs and larvae. Any consistency will be will be okay, o diba? Ayan, charot. Okay, so again, um, these are the possible parasitic forms that you can recover from is from the different types of consistency of stool. Now, let's say, no, um, example, ma-assign jud mo og uh, government hospitals, no, Soto, Galiares, or Asap Mangani, and then ma-busy jud mo, Ana, no, normal na lang ng Osaka shift, uh, one shift in your clinical microscopy, makadawat mo og 50 ka urine samples or uh, 10 ka stool samples in one shift, no? One shift, minimum na. <laughs> okay. So, let's say, nagdunga na ta ng stool samples, no? So, unsa man inyong iuna, no? Unsa inyong unahon? Ang inyong kaugalingon. Charot, okay? I realized na itong unahon na itong kaugalingon. Okay, alright. Charot, pitaw. The first uh, stool that you should prioritize is, of course, the liquid specimens, okay? Liquid specimens, semi-formed specimens, especially if if the liquid specimens or semi-formed specimens, you can see blood and mucus because this could mean that uh, there is the presence of trophozoites. And diba? when we say there are trophozoites, then uh, we should prioritize that because the trophozoites are very sensitive. Dali kay silang ma-hurt, charot. Dali silang ma-disintegrate. Okay? All right. So blood and mucus, that, that could uh, point to the presence of trophozoites. So we need to prioritize that. Again, atong unahon is, <laughs> kaugalingon, atong unahon as consistency of stool, liquid, no? followed by mga semi-formed, and then padulong na sa, so, uh, sa, sa hard no form. Because again, uh, we are really looking after trophozoites or what we're after are your trophozoites. Especially, especially if your stool sample contains blood and mucus. Because more often than not, this point 
to the presence of trophozoites, especially in amoebiasis and amoeba histolytica na infections. Okay? All right. So that's your order of priority, especially when you go to uh, the clinical setting na good in hospitals. Magdawat na mugta ng sample sa mga anak ka na shocks. Kinsa kong unahon di re. O diba? Ganun. Okay? All right. Ayan. Okay. Now, for gross examination pa lang daan, macroscopic examination of stool, you can already see mga adult nematodes, no? Because these are large parasites and even proglotids of your tapeworm. Okay? So, drap pa lang daan, macroscopic. If you already see that, no? You can already have a presumptive diagnosis na, ah, okay, the patient is experiencing ascariasis or the patient patient is having an infection of tenia or whatever, or tapeworm, ganun, okay? All right. Now, this is um, parang your diagram illustration of the recovery, no, of the protozoan cysts and trophozoites depending on the consistency of stool. So, as you can see, ang cysts, mas daghan gud siya sa form. And as you go to watery, the cysts decreases, or the frequency of, or the chances of recovering cysts as you go to watery, mas mugamay, okay? Or it lessens. But for troughs, baliktad, no? Troughs, mas ma-recover ni mo siya from watery. And as you go to the formed uh, stool, mas less na siyang ma-recover. Okay? Alright, ayan. So that's for the different consistency of stools. Okay. Now we continue again. Um, If you need to store your stool because there is a delay, you can put it in your refrigerator. Katurang refrigerator good na ilalom na sa ref. Okay? The normal temp, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. And it, it should be stored temporarily. Okay? Because if you store it for a long period of time, prolonged, it can lead to desiccation or mag-dry na siya, mag-uga, no? So, huwag mong ako gi-ref, pero nga naman kong ga-uga. Charot, joke lang. Okay, alright. Ayan, so, baka, na, baka prolonged refrigeration na yung iba dyan, kaya na, na-uga na, or nag-dry na, so you need to take out uh, you need to take yourself out of the refrigerator. Charot. Okay. So again, prolonged refrigeration of your stool samples can bring about drying or desiccation. And aside from that, of course, trophozoites are killed by refrigeration. Okay. Ayan. All right. Again, very uh, important precaution. Never, never, never freeze stool nor keep them in incubators. Diba? Imagine you freeze your stool in your... <laughs> your you freeze your stool, diba? After pila ka minutes or hours na nakai free ice candy, charot, yak, <laughs> na chocolate flavor, ew, <laughs> okay, all right. So never freeze two samples, nor keep them in incubators. Again, for the main reason that your trophocytes will be killed, okay, and other parasites also will be distorted. Now, especially if you keep your stool in incubators, diba? your stool contains a lot of bacteria. Now, under incubation, that could proliferate, no? Pero siyang mudaghan. So, it could lead noon to uh, a lot of bacteria in your microscopic field when you examine, and it will be difficult for you to look into the look protozoa or mga parasites kay um, puno na siya og bacteria, no? There's a lot of bacteria already, okay? All right. And of course, um, when you submit your sample, no? The important information that are needed, minimum um, information that should be found, is your patient's name, of course, um, ID number, physician's name, and date and time of collection. This is based on theory, okay? All right, but in every hospital that you get to be assigned in, all right, in every laboratory, they have their own SOPs. They have their own standard operating procedures, okay? So they have their own um, precautions or like parameters on what should be included in the label, okay? So um, so I have to emphasize at this part, dears, again, that all the things that you have learned in theory, okay, or whatever you have learned in theory, uh, these may not be applied in practice most of the time or always, okay? So do not be shocked, no, if namasign mo in a lab, okay, in the lab, in the hospital ba, or freestanding lab or whatever, wherever, if mo work mo as med tech, um, Ma realize niyo na naayo bang mga theoretical concepts na wala gina apply in practice or na ay mga modifications okay all right and that's um something that you should not parang dika dika dili dapat ka musupak ana especially if mag intern ka okay because um pwede kang maisuhan ma may mong issue or maglagot imong mga med text alam mo na no um so if you have questions about their SOPs, then you should ask politely, no? Dual ka sa section head ba or med tech para ma-explainan ka. Because their SOPs din naman are based on a lot of references, manuals, and mga different agencies, DOH ba or wherever. So um, it's their decision now on what to um, to implement in their um, hospital, in their laboratory, okay? So it's part of their SOPs. So once you, once you are an intern, okay, or once you work in a hospital laboratory, follow the SOPs of the laboratory. So I'm just saying this, kaya ba sin mo ba? In, when you practice in, um, in the hospital soon, or when you become an intern in the second sem sa hospital, ma-sign mo. na yung mga ubang procedures or methods na dili siya gina-follow 
pareha sa theory or kung unsa siya gingon sa theory wala gyud siya gina-follow in practice okay so an example of that is my experience in one of the hospitals that I became an intern in diba when they um perform the forward typing of blood typing sa slide okay the reactions are graded meaning ilang ginagrade ang re reactions like 4 plus 3 plus agglutination but diba based on theory on what we know those reactions are only reported as positive for clumping, positive for agglutination, or negative for clumping, negative for agglutination. But in this particular hospital, dira komo chika asa. <laughs> in this particular hospital, yes, um, they grade sila. Okay, lang butang ano grading, 4 plus, 3 plus ang agglutination. And in theory, diba, ang i-grade na reactions are the tube, the tube na reactions. Diba, if mag tube method ta sa forward typing, cross matching, whatever. Okay, so kanina hospital mo lang SOP, ilang laboratory mo na SOP, so follow lang. Okay, if you have questions, um, ask politely. Ayaw po like, ma'am, sayup ni, diligo ni mao. Na, 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 my gosh, that's very bad. No, pwede mo mag insubordination or disrespect, whatever. So, ayaw na lang yun. Okay? Alright, ayan. So, again, bottom line is, not everything that you have learned in theory or whatever that you have learned in theory, it's not always applied in practice. Or if it's applied, na modifications gamay. Okay? Alright, ayan. Sige. Now, uh, we go now to your stool preservative. So, let's say, no, there's a delay. There's a delay in your processing, okay? So you before you submit to the laboratory, you need to subject your sample into a uh, preservative, no? Preservative or fixative. Now, when selecting a fixative, ang imuhang consideration should dapat is the possibility of making a permanent stain smears, okay? All right, and it depends also on the need of the laboratory. And whatever the fixative or preservative is used, the recommended ratio fixative to sample is three is to one. So as you can see, mas daghan yun ng fixative compared to specimen. Because if konti lang ang fixative compared to specimen, then that could uh, lead to improper or inadequate fixation. So your parasites will not be preserved well. Okay, ilang morphology, pwede ma-distort, no? Okay, wala na siya na preserve properly. Okay? Alright, ayan. Now, specimen should be mixed well with the fix fixative to achieve thorough fixation. And again, it should be fixed at least 30 minutes before processing begins. Okay. Now, um, in the US, no, or in other countries, then the ONP examination, OVA and parasite examination, is composed of three stages, okay, three steps. Ang ONP. The first is the direct fecal smear, no, and the second is concentration techniques, and the last is your permanent stain smears. Now, in other countries, ang ilang gina prefer na sample is the preserved stool, okay, because di sila kaayo ganahan, or di sila mo prefer ang fresh stool, because ang ilang rationale is the fresh stool may have already um, been submitted in a later time. There, there has already been a delay in the submission kung fresh tool. So if fresh tool lang dawaton, it ilang rational is, could be na-deteriorate na mga parasites na added to. So wala na pulos, alright? That's why they are really looking into, or they are, they are kanang, they are after, no? Uh, they prefer the preserved tool na sampo sa other countries, okay? But in the Philippines, uh, welcome regitag fresh tool sige okay Mo most offered gyud sa inyo hang uh, assignment sa clean mic ang inyo madawat is fresh tool fresh tool gyud okay very fresh okay all right ayan sige so kani mga stool preservatives very common po very common nila sa other countries okay as per experience sa uh, routine hospital usually wala kay koy naka experience na preservative for stool samples no of course uh, histo histo technique or histo path na section na agi for na si mga fixatives of course pero in para for para sa routine hospital wala kaayo okay all right now for stool preservatives of course we'll start first uh with the eco-friendly fixative which nigawa sa inyo ang pretest pag eco-friendly fixative ang answer is eco fix that's the brand pero it's a type of pva so ang answer ato is pva all right and if ang question kay universal na, na universal na word universal fixative eco-friendly gapon total fix still again still um the brand okay now Again, in other countries, ang ilahang preferred method, diba, as mentioned, is preserved stool. Okay. And they uh, perform this, no, or they put their stool in vials. And they have this system known as the two vial collection system. The two vial collection system contains of two vials, no, of course. Uh, the first vial contains uh, formalin, okay, or buffered formalin. And the second vial contains PVA. Now, you put a stool sample in each of the vial, and each vial has its own uh, test procedures na mong buhaton. So, for formalin, ang pwede mong buhaton kay concentration techniques and immunoassays. And for PVA, permanent stain smears, okay? So, here's an example of your uh, two-vial system. So, again, the blue one, 
contains uh, PVA and the pink one contains your uh, formalin, okay? So, mubutan ka og stool sample in each, okay? And each of the stool sample also uh, will now be subjected to the different respective tests for each vial, okay? All right, ayan. Now, uh, we go now to the first type of uh, preservative or fixative, your formalin, diba? Of course, not only in para, but especially in your histotechniques, very common. Your formalin, an all-purpose fixative, we may add a sodium phosphate for it to be buffered, no? to preserve even more the morphological characteristics. We use two types of concentration, either 5% or 10%, depending on the parasitic forms that we want to preserve. The first one is 5% concentration, if you want to preserve, protozoan cysts, and 10% concentration for helminth eggs and larvae. So how do I remember? 5C, ayan. So iPhone 5C before, di ba? <laughs> iPhone 5C, 5C, 5% for your C for cysts, oh, di ba? So 5% C, 5C, 5% concentration, cysts, okay. And then 10%, of course, helminth eggs and larvae, 10H, di ba? So uh, 10H, mura siya jeep sa Cebu, oh, di ba? All right. Okay, now for formalin again, uh, so the same ratio, dapat fixative to stool, uh, stool to preservative, one is to three, okay? All right, because again, mas daghan, Japan, mas daghan ju dapat ang preservative. And your preserved stool can be uh, concentrated using the FECT. Uh, procedure. Okay, that's for formalin. Next, you have Shodin solution. Now, Shodin solution for the longest time has been considered to be the gold standard, okay, because it allows or it provides excellent preservation of your protozoan trophozoites and cysts. Now, for the longest time, it was considered your gold standard. Na ko yung mga gold standard na yan, okay, na remember pa ba mga reference method, lumalabas in sa boards. Okay, so example, what is your uh, Clean chem, ta, clean chem. What is your reference method for plasma glucose determination? Plasma glucose. <laughs> Hexokinase. Hexokinase. Okay. All right. So hexokinase method. Okay. Very good. So kinsa to siya? Asa na block? Uh, block E. E and? G, sir. G, sir. Okay. Very good. That's correct. Very good, dearest. Okay. So hexokinase method, that's for glucose, plasma glucose, na reference method. For other analytes, please, please uh, still memorize. No? Um, siguro, uh, as I mentioned sa kong other sections, um, so clean chem ninyo is in your first compre, right? So um, <clears throat> na ako'y kanang murag reinforcement lecture notes sa when katonggi invite ko sa Lemar na mo, mo review sa mga mutiko boards. So basically, ano siya, dearest ka nang summarize na gani siya. Ay, dili siya summarized. Ka nang gipili ra akong mga, gipili ra akong mga concepts na nandito. Basta. And then, siguro, I can share it to you, dearest. And then, nandito ang summary sa mga reference methods, cute. Sa tanan, sa mga analytes na important. Okay? So, if you would want naman, pero if di mo ganan, okay ra po, no? <laughs> it's na, ano naman. Basta if, if allowed, si manang hindi kong mom key. Pero I think okay nang naman. I will share it to you, dearest. Okay. All right. Ayan. Sige. So, <clears throat> again, that's for students. No, gold standard uh, for the longest time. But the disadvantage lang is it contains mercury chloride. No? And mercury chloride is highly toxic to humans. Okay. Pero again, still considered to be the gold standard. Okay. Sige. So, since we're talking about fixative, no? Sige. Histotechniques na to. Uh, what was considered or what is considered to be the most rapid, no? Most rapid fixative. Sa histotechnique. Carnoids fluid. Carnoids fluid. Okay, very good. Carnoids fluid. So, kinsa man to na blocks? Sige. E. G, sir. E and? G. G. Okay. Very good. Well, okay, actually, okay lang kinsa mo, dears, no? Nag, ano, familiarize ako sa mga tingog. Okay, so E and G. Very good, ha? Very good. That's, cor that's correct. Very good that you remember your carnoids fluid. Most rapid fixative. Okay, very good. Next, uh, we continue to the next tool preservative, your PVA. Now, PVA in itself is not the fixative, dears. No, it just, it serves as an adhesive, okay? Uh, but when we use PVA, we usually mix it with another fixative, and it's usually Shodin's fluid. Because we use Shodin's fluid, ang disadvantage po niya is it uses uh, mercury chloride, okay? But PVA really, really preserves well uh, the protozoan cysts and trophozoites, especially for permanent staining. That's why, di ba, sa two-vial system, PVA yun ang ilang ginagamit for permanent staining, because it's really best no for permanent staining on PVA all right um and because again as i've mentioned it is mixed with shodin solution so the disadvantage is your um uh, mercury chloride that's why manufacturers have made or have constructed 
uh, have created the modified PVA. Now, this modified PVA contains or uses other substances aside from mercury chloride that are less, no, that are less toxic or that are safer for uh, humans, okay, such as your copper sulfate or zinc sulfate. And when you use zinc sulfate, it's best partnered with your trichrome stain. Okay, all right, ayan. Now, next, uh, next, okay. Puberty, charot. Next preservative is your MIF, methylate iodine formalin. Now, MIF, that is the advantage lang is it already stains and fixes the sample. No, so components both fix and stain uh, the sample. So it contains thimerosal and iodine, which serves as your stain, and formalin as your preservative. Okay, but the disadvantage lang, although nag stain siya, um, the stain is not as satisfactory compared to when using your sodium solution. So when you stain uh, samples preserved in MIF, the results are not as satisfactory compared to your sodium fluid. All right, so since we're talking about stain, all right, histotechniques pa din, what is considered to be the oldest stain? Oldest stain. Iodine. Iodine. Okay, sorry. perfect. Very good. Sige. And so, ito mga blocks. I love G that. Sir. G and H. Okay. Grabe lumalaban ha, lumalaban ni na section talaga promise as in. I love that. Okay, so iodine. Perfect. Oldest stain is your iodine. Do not forget, I'm not sure kung asa na mention sa histotech ba or other subjects, pero please take note. The oldest stain, no? Shajud, iodine. Very good. Okay, all right. So these are your stool preservatives for st uh, stool preservatives. Okay. Next, we have your sodium acetate, acetic acid formalin, or your SAF. Advantage lang is it does not use your mercury chloride, um, and it can also be stored for a long period of time. All right. But the disadvantage is the images uh, preserved, no, or stool samples um, preserved in this. Uh, preservative, if you is stain, the images are not as sharp compared to PVA or sodin. So, basta yung mga permanent staining imuhang target, the best fixative talaga is your PVA or sodins. Okay. And another uh, modification is a single vial collection system. So, it's a modification of the two vial collection system. So, this time, single vial, usara ka vial, imong gamiton. And from this vial already, you can already perform a ton of tests. No concentration, permanent stain smears, and even fecal amino acids. All right. So, it's very cost effective, very convenient for the lab. No. Kay three in one na siya, di ba? Yes. So, yes, muna siya, single vial collection system. So, here's an example. So, example, EcoFix is also a single vial collection system, no? So, already all the samples there, you put your stool sample there, and then you can already perform a lot of tests from this vial alone, di ba? So, usara, pero daga na kang pwedeng mahimo, di ba? Okay, all right. So, those are your uh, stool preservatives, okay? Now, before we proceed to the different examination techniques, yes, dears, do you have any questions? Any clarifications? All right. Okay, kinsa ganitong parasite? What is this parasite that cannot develop further into latter stages? Aberrant. Aberrant. Okay, aberrant. Okay, very good. This type of parasite only passes the digestive tract without infecting it. Yes, the film is on page. Spurious. Okay, all right. Spurious. Okay, page ato na. Yes, okay, very good. Spurious. Okay, dapat ano ta? Pass, pass. Okay, pash, pash. Okay, all right. This type of host no, serves as the motel, hotel, no, where sexual reproduction occurs. Definitive, final. definitive sir. Okay, final. definitive, final host. This type of vector only assists in the transfer, but not Latte. part of the life cycle. Okay. Or, masuko de ay. Okay. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Joke ra. Mechanical or phoretic. Very good. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. Okay. Now, again, uh, this preservative already uh, acts both as a stain and a fixative at the same time. No. MIF. <laughs> okay, your MIF. Okay, MIF. Okay, all right. Concentration of formalin to use to preserve helminth eggs and larvae? 10%. Okay, 10%. Very good. Okay, and if cysts, 5%. 5C. Okay, 5C. Okay, very good. Okay, all right. Again, oldest stain? Iodine. Iodine. Okay, perfect. All right. Most rapid fixative? Carnoise fluid. fluid. Okay, carnoise fluid. fluid. Very good. Okay. Most common torch agent could cause congenital infections? Uh, 
CMV cytomegalovirus. Very good. Okay. All right. Ayan. Very good. Very good. Okay. Dapat snappy. Dapat alert. No? Okay. Very good. All right. So we continue now with your stool examination techniques. So what are the different methods of stool examination? So we'll start first again with your direct fecal smear. Of course, you've already experienced this back in your second year in parasitology. Um, again, as I've mentioned, this is, this is part of the OVA and parasite examination, ONP. Theoretically, ha, this is the first part this is the first stage okay so it's the preparation of the direct fecal smear or direct wet preparation so meaning you can just a sample okay you add a reagent and then examine under the microscope that's direct wet mount direct wet preparation okay all right now for direct fecal smear um as you can see, no, it's considered to be the routine method of stool examination. And we perform this only if we receive fresh stool samples, okay? Only perform when we receive fresh stool samples. Because if you receive preserved stools, you do not need to perform this anymore. You skip the na method, okay? Kay kung preserved stools imuhang madawat, you proceed directly to concentration techniques and then permanent stain smears, okay? All right, ayan. But in the Philippines, we still welcome, welcome you natin fresh tools. So we perform the direct fecal smear. Now for the direct fecal smear, you need about two milligrams of stool or the size of a P, PEA, PEA, or enough to form, enough to form a low cone, low cone at the bottom of the applicator stick. Diba? We use applicator stick in examination, man, of stool. So enough to form a low cone, L-O-W, cone, C-O-N-E, low cone at the bottom of the applicator stick or the size of a P, P-E-A. Please take note. Ayan. Now, if you're, if ang, if ang question is the amount of stool necessary for submission, Okay, for submission of specimen, ang atong answer is thumb sized. Okay, thumb sized stool for formed stool and 10 ml for watery. But if ang question is amount of stool needed for examination, okay, ang atong answer is P sized or 2 milligrams of stool. Okay, all right. Now, 2 milligrams of stool, adani mo siyag one drop of again 0.85% NaCl or your NSS normal saline solution. Okay, but some references. Uh, gi refers as 0.9% ground off siya. So okay ra Japan. And then you add your cover slip and then examine under the microscope. So as you can see, direct wet mount, okay? Directly from the source, from the fecal specimen, you add a wet reagent, no NACL, and then examine under the microscope. Direct wet mount, direct wet preparation, okay? Your direct fecal smear, okay? It can be temporarily stained using your NARES buffered methylene blue, and we can also uh, subject it to micrometry, especially if we want to determine the size, ayan. Because some amoeba, especially entamoeba hesolitica and entamoeba hartmani, they are differentiated through their size, especially sa mga cysts nila. Okay? So size matters sa mga entamoeba. Ayan. For you, dear, size matters ba? Charot. Mumatter ba ang size? For you? No, sir. <laughs> okay, alright. So, dili mo matter ang size for you. Okay, sige, note that. For me, kay mumatter ang size. Charot, joke lang, choosy. Anyway, joke lang. All right, okay, okay. So again, um, uh, entamoeba solitica and entamoeba hartman is an example. So, di ba sa inyong pre-test natin question, no? A cyst that measures 6 to 8 micrometer was recovered. And iyahang characteristics kay similar to entamoeba solitica. Clear, um, katong centrally located karyosome, no? You have also fine granular chromatin, etc. But ang difference lang is the size, no? It's smaller. So, ang atong answer ato is entamoeba hartman -ay. Because entamoeba hartmani was considered uh, the small race, no? Entamoeba histolytica. Okay? So, mo matter sa size. That's why micrometry, we use micrometry to measure. Okay? All right. So, ang answer ato entamoeba hartmani. So, we'll discuss more of that when we go to the amoeba. amoeba. Okay. Now, per experience, routine hospital um, mga lab procedures, wala kayo micrometry. Okay? <laughs> because... Um, Wala, wala siya, wala siya. Uh, wala ko ka-experience. Uh, usually, siguro, it's performed in mga research labs, no? Uh, reference laboratories where it's really important to really speciate, no? The and, uh, the species na yung makita. Alright? But in routine hospital, as per experience na ko, wala kayo micrometry na gina-perform. Okay. Now, for direct fecal smear, cover slip, again, you start first with LPO, no? Uh, for screening, and then you proceed to HPO for uh, for confirmation in a way, all right, para mas maklaro. So you examine at least one third of the cover slip of both saline and iodine. Now, oil immersion not recommended because organism is not, uh, morphology is not clear of the organism, okay? All right, now your direct fecal smear, again, the main reagent is your NSS, but we can also use iodine, but iodine is optional. Now, the main advantage, greatest advantage talaga your direct fecal smear, especially in your saline mounts, 
or using your NSS is that you can visualize or you can view motel live trophozoites. Okay, motel live trophozoites. But once you add iodine na, mamatay, no? The iodine kills your trophozoites. So, din mo siya makitaan ang trophozoites when you use iodine. Okay? Alright, so... Asa ang iodine? What is the purpose of the iodine? It's just a temporary stain for your cysts. No, You can visualize your protozoan cysts using iodine temporarily. Okay, And even mga helminth eggs. But it's mostly important for the cysts, ang iodine. But once you add iodine, the trophozoites will now be killed. Okay? Ayan. Alright. Sige. Now, for direct fecal smear, theoretically, the results are considered presumptive or prelim preliminary pa lang. Okay? Because uh, theoretically, dapat ang confirmation talaga, no? the confirmation for... Uh, intestinal protozoa especially is through the permanent stain smear okay but in the philippines <laughs> um ego na sa direct fecal smear pwede na tamo confirm dira okay because again naman we receive fresh tools okay so so direct fecal smear pa lang kutubra ta dito di na concentration and uh, permanent stain smear okay in routine hospitals usually because if you perform then these three uh, procedures it's quite time consuming din naman and it's not cost effective because it's expensive you use a lot of reagents then materials so medyo di siya cost effective for our setting okay but in the other countries they perform it okay so theoretical na siya okay all right ayan so that's what i mean diba not all that is in theory is applied in practice oh diba okay ayan so as i mentioned again uh preserved specimens as i mentioned do not require your direct fecal smear or direct wet preparation when you receive preserved stools you immediately perform concentration techniques and then uh, permanent stain smears okay and if the feces contains mucus or blood again you get your sample from there because uh we are expected or we expect that that part of the sample contains a lot of trophozoites okay or na mga motile trophozoites so your direct fecal smear you can already um retrieve a lot of parasites no you, have, you can see protozoa like mga entamoebas lytica no trophozoite cyst you can also see of course helminth eggs okay and the larvae of strongyloides or uh hookworm okay all right ayan. so that's for the first smear your direct fecal smear so here's an example of direct fecal smear so left is of course using saline mount and the right is using your iodine mount okay and these are your ideal direct fecal smears as you can see if they are put no in on top of a printed material the print should still be seen or it's barely legible your print should be barely legible meaning makitan gyapon pero medyo blurred okay all right ayan and these are your methods of examination as you can see medyo zigzag siya pwede from left to right or from top to bottom okay at least one third the cover slip and then you report your results okay all right ayan now for the next type of smear is your cato thick smear now by the name itself cato thick thick you need quite a lot of stool no 50 to 60 milligrams of stool now the difference lang is you add also a cellophane no you add a cellophane that is immersed in your glycerin malachite green solution and if you don't have malachite green diba we can use green cellophane so i'm sure if you can remember para sa second year diba nagamit mo tong green na cellophane yung mo siyang gihanig <laughs> or yung mo siyang gi you place it on top of the stool diba yeah this is the cathodic smear okay now again uh you have reagents that we use here Glycerine, which serves as your clearing agent, no, to remove the sample of artifacts or any mga unwanted materials, and the malachite green or again green cellophane, if wala kay malachite green, which serves as a uh, uh, to minimize, no, which functions to minimize the brightness of the microscopic field to protect the eyes of your examiner. Okay, all right, the glycerine malachite green uh, solution. Now. Um, after preparation of the smear, you should let it stand muna at room temperature for about an hour, okay? Uh, but in your para lab manual, ang dimension na dito kay 20 minutes, okay? Basta ang point is, you don't examine it directly or immediately after preparation. Why? Because you let glycerin first to act on it as a cleaning agent, okay? All right. Now, this is particularly useful for your helminths, especially your helminths with thick eggs no with thick shells like your ascaris and trichuris because mga hookworm mga shonji na thin ang shells they may be uh, distorted or may disintegrate sila all right and this is first used um as a stool examination for mass population so example if you want to test a population for helminthiasis na basalay helminths you should you can perform your cathodic smear okay all right ayan so again we can also not detect your protozoan cysts and trophozoites because they can be destroyed by the reagents that you use, all right? But again, the point is you leave it at room temperature muna before you examine, okay? To let the glycerin act 
on the sample. Okay? All right. So here's an example of your cattle thick, diba? If you can remember, you put a uh, 50 to 60 milligrams of stool. Uh, before I forget the idea, 50 to 60 milligrams of stool or equivalent to the size of a soybean. Ayan. Size of a soybean, soybean, S-O-Y-B-E-A-N. Soybean, size of a soybean, that is equivalent to 50 to 60 milligrams. So, muna siya yung stool na yung kailangan. So, you put the stool at the center, di ba? And then you place the cellophane, di ba? If you can remember the procedure. And then you use a rubber stopper to press on the stool para mas spread. Okay? And then after that, you let it stand again for about an hour or 20 minutes or based on your procedure. And then after that, after letting it stand muna, you then examine it under the microscope, okay? Dili na ka mag add cover slip, ha? You not put a cover slip anymore because the cellophane will now act as the cover slip. Okay, all right, ayan. And here's an example of your trichuris trichura in the cathothic smear. So as you can see, the background is quite clean, no? It's quite clear na, pero it's not really colored green, no? Para siyang yellowish, ayan. But as you can see, the helminth eggs is quite clear then, no? And um, you can really see that... Uh, this is a trichuris egg, diba? And again, very useful for mga thick eggs. Trichuris, ascaris, diba? And we performed this uh, last year, last sem, no, with for for parasitology. Um, and what we use kay chicken stool, stool sa chicken. And we saw in anina egg, pero for chicken, it's capillaria species, oh, diba? Ayan. So uh, very useful for those types of eggs, the mga eggs with thick shells. Okay, all right. So those are all for the direct uh, wet mounts, no? The direct wet preparations, direct pickle smear, and your cathotic smear. Now, the I recall, as I mentioned, ONP examination consists of three stages. The first stage is the preparation of your direct uh, wet mount or direct fecal smear. The second stage is your concentration techniques. Ayan. Now, concentration techniques this time are methods, no? Uh, that is, ang yung main purpose is ma-concentrate or ma-recover ang tanang parasites that could have been that are found or that are affecting the, the patient, especially in the stool sample, okay? So, concentration techniques, by the name itself, concentration. Bahalag unsa ka gamay or kadaghan, ma-concentrate siya. And it's really useful, especially if the patient is still in the start of the infection or the number of parasites are still little, di ba, in the sample. Because ma-concentrate naman siya, okay? And concentration techniques can be divided into two, meth two types. You have sedimentation and flotation. So we'll start first with sedimentation. By the name itself, sedimentation methods, your feces, your stool sample, is suspended in a solution, okay? Solution that contains a low specific gravity or that has low specific gravity compared to the parasitic forms found in your sample. So hence, low specific gravity man ang reagent or ang solution compared to the parasitic eggs or cysts. So ang mahitabo is mas bugat or the parasitic eggs or cysts are heavier, hence they will settle at the bottom, they will sediment at the bottom, and they can be recovered at the bottom, either by spontaneous, uh, uh, spontaneously lang, like you wait na mo settle siya sa ilalom, or centrifugation. Okay? All right. Ayan. So it's the best technique for the recovery of these eggs because these eggs are heavy. So kanisa na mga parasites, bugat ang ilang itlog. Okay? All right. Ayan. So kung bugat yung mga itlog dyan, mga concentration technique na ka, sedimentation methods. Okay? So you have schistosoma, your percolated eggs, shamatoed eggs, cestoed eggs, and trichuris capillaria na mga eggs. So these are mga heavy eggs. So they will settle at the bottom okay so most of that most of the procedures here are the procedures that i included they will undergo centrifugation because if we wait pa no simple gravity there's also a sedimentation method na simple gravity like mo wait lang ka sa gravity na mo settle yun sila so it will take time okay and we don't want that because we want to be efficient no we want to release results as soon as possible para makasave og life yes naman so we undergo or we let the uh, solution undergo centrifugation, diba? So, diba, if ever ikaw nakaiganahan na someone ma-fall ni mo, diba? Will you wait or nakai buhaton para ma-fall siya ni mo? Diba, of course, dito ka, sanay buhaton. Na, nakai buhaton para ma-fall siya ni mo. Charot, adi, mga patagad na ka, yes, react, react sa story, charot. Okay, wasa na yung mga naigo, dira, charot. Okay, anyway, alright. So, yan, same same concept here. So, para mas mo paspas atong life, mas less stressful. Ato siyang i undergo centrifugation. Okay, all right. So, for the first method of sedimentation method is your acid ether concentration technique. So, by the name itself, nasa pangalan na, your main reagents are acid and ether. So, acid in the form of 40% HCl and ether. 
40% HCl serves as, again, to dissolve albuminous material and ether to dissolve the neutral fats, lipids, and carbohydrates in the stool. So both of them uh, functions as a clearing agent, okay, to remove pa rin the debris, no, unwanted artifacts found in your stool sample. So this method recommended, again, for the following eggs, katong mga heavy na eggs, and this is the choice procedure if the the sample comes from animals like cats and dogs. Okay. Disadvantage again, destruction of protozoan cysts because again, um, reagent then centrifuge pag yun. All right. Okay. So clearing agents, since we're talking about clearing agents, again, histotechnique ulit, what is the most commonly used clearing agent? Xylene. Xylene. Okay. Very good. So tanang blocks ba tong answer ato? Okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, lang i-adanan. Okay, all right, very good. So, silene, do not forget. Okay, silene, most commonly used clearing agent histotechniques na to for our processing of human tissues. Very good. Okay, so for AECT, again, acid, ether, no? 40% HCl and ether. So again, but ang ether lang, ang disadvantage sa ether, dears, um, ether is explosive and flammable. So pwede siyang mubuto, yes naman, and uh, pwede siyang mukatch og fire. That's why um, in other procedures, atong gina-replace ang ether by a less, uh, by a safer no, na, na substance. Okay? Alright, so that's for AECT. Alright, that's the first method. Next is of course your FECT, your formalin ether ethyl acetate concentration technique. So this procedure is considered to be the most commonly performed most commonly used concentration technique, okay? Not only sedimentation, but it's the most commonly performed, okay? By the name itself, nasa pangalan na are the reagents. Formalin, which serves as your fixative. Ether, again, same same function with your AECT, but as I've mentioned, it's explosive and flammable. Hence, we can use an alternative, your ethyl acetate, okay? All right, ayan. And as you can see, the ganshang advantages, no? You can recover both protozoan cysts and helminth eggs. It can also be done in formalin preserved or PVA preserved samples. More parasites can also be recovered. Morphology is better preserved. And sediments uh, recovered from FECT can be preserved for a long period of time. That's why it's commonly performed and it's really the best put na procedure. Okay? Ang fact. Now, please take note again, uh, these methods are subjected to concent uh, centrifugation. Now, these are the layers na ma recover. Okay, or layers formed after centrifugation of the FECT tube or FEACT. So, ang first, ang pinaka first layer is your ethyl acetate. Okay, ethyl acetate. Second is your fecal debris or fecal plug. Okay, the third layer is your formalin. And lastly, your sediment. Okay, so please take note. So, ethyl acetate ang pinaka taas, then followed by your debris, fecal debris or fecal fat, fecal plug. Okay, third is your formalin. And lastly, your sediment. So what we do is, of course, diba, if you can remember so yung para sa second second year, diba, atong nag-shake mo, nag-shake mo tube na na-i-attach, na tai and then, inyohang after certification, inyong gi, uh, tang tang ning plug, and then inyong gi-decant. And then what you examine now is the sediment, okay? And the sediment now contains all the helminth eggs, no? Katong mga ni settle sa ilalom. Okay? Alright, and that's for Fet, okay, or F E C T F E A C T. Okay, all right, ayan. So those are all for sedimentation methods. Okay, now we go now to flotation methods. So for flotation methods, it's the opposite of sedimentation methods. This time, ang imong reagents or solution, they now have the higher specific gravity compared to your parasitic forms, eggs or cysts. So that so hence your parasitic eggs and cysts are lighter, mas gaan sila. So what happens is they will float to the top, okay, make it drop, charot. Dito sa taas, okay? That's why flotation, because they will be recovered at the surface of the solution, okay? All right. It yields a cleaner preparation than sedimentation techniques because your debris, your mga fecal debris, they're much heavier, okay, compared to the solution. So that's why they will settle at the bottom, okay? So what we're examining, man, are at the, at the top, the surface, so that's why the preparation is much cleaner, okay? So it's the best technique for the recovery of your protozoan cysts, okay, and nematode eggs except for um, trichuris and capillaria. Because again, trichuris and capillaria, if you can remember, their eggs consist of bipolar mucus plugs. Now, these bipolar mucus plugs are heavy, or these what makes uh, these what make your eggs of capillary and trichuris heavy, okay? All right, so Muna siya, mga lighter na mga eggs or cysts ang ma-recover. Okay. Alright, now we go first to the first method, your zinc sulfate flotation method. So by the name itself, zinc sulfate flotation method, it uses the reagent 33% zinc sulfate. Okay. But as we mentioned, operculated, very dense eggs, mga heavy eggs, they do not concentrate well if 
uh, using this flotation method. Okay? Now, specific gravity of zinc sulfate na itong gamiton, a range of 1.18 to 1.20. And igawas nyo sa yung pretest, di ba? Kung fresh to specimen, gamiton is 1.18. Kung formalin preserved, 1.20. So, how do I remember? Fresh at 18. Ayan, di ba? So, if you're still 18 years old, fresh pa ka. Wala pa kayo kay problems, no? Wala pa ka na heartbroken. Charot. So, fresh pa ka at 18. So, fresh to sample, you use 1.18 na specific gravity of zinc sulfate. Okay? And formally preserved, 1.20. Okay? Um, but ang disadvantage lang, there could be destruction or distortion and shrinkage of your protozoan cysts and thin nematode eggs. Okay? So, marasya disadvantage. Alright. But since, because again, this is a flotation method, di ba? Um, and ang recover lang kay katong mga lighter eggs, no? What if the sample contains pala the heavier eggs, like katong mga schistosoma, etc.? That is why it's recommended to examine both the surface film and the sediment also because this will ensure the recovery talaga, higher chances of recovering all the parasites talaga to the sample may have both the lighter eggs or cysts and the heavier ones okay all right and these are the layers formed after centrifugation ang pinaka top is surface film followed by your zinc sulfate na reagent and then finally the sediment again for zinc sulfate flotation method it's highly recommended okay to ensure the detection of all possible organisms you and you examine both the sediment at the surface and the sediment. Okay, that's for zinc sulfate flotation. Please take note ang imuhang mga specific gravity. Okay? All right. Ayan. All right. Now, the last two methods of flotation, still the same principle, but it uses different ano lang, reagents. So for brine flotation method, diba, if you can uh, remember din sa para, you perform this, it uses saturated table salt. Nasa pangalan na brine. Okay? Uh, stools, imong sample, you mix it directly with your table salt solution. So helminth eggs, hookworm, schistosoma can shrink okay and mga operculated eggs the heavy ones again not useful because they will sink to the bottom okay and sheather sugar flotation by the name itself it uses sugar boiled with phenol so high specific gravity 1.27 and it's mainly used for your coccidian oocytes cryptosporidium cyclospora and cytoisospora Okay, so these are the coccidian oocysts. So if a question is best technique for the recovery of your coccidian oocysts, press the buzzer, you have uh, sheather sugar flotation. Okay, all right. Now, before we continue to school, uh, to the next, no, um, generally, theoretically, dears, it's uh, recommended to perform one sedimentation technique and one flotation technique. But because, again, that is really uh, not cost-effective no, and time-consuming, if, if you need to choose between the two, Ang imong we perform na is the concentration technique, uh, the sedimentation technique. Because the sedimentation technique, according to Garcia, is less prone to technical errors and easier to perform. Okay, if you want to choose, if you need to choose between the two, you you yeah, you choose the sedimentation technique. Because again, there's your concentration techniques. Um, I have to emphasize your concentration techniques. Usually, we perform this for your helminth eggs. Okay, we can co we can confirm the diagnosis of helminthiasis or helminth eggs usually through the concentration techniques. You may be wondering, sir, paano ni mga protozoan cysts, okay, or protozoan trophozoites? There, that is why we confirm them using the permanent stain smears, which is the last stage of your ONP examination. Okay, all right. So if you want to choose, or if you need. To yeah, if you need to choose between a sedimentation method or flotation method, you choose a sedimentation method. Okay? All right. Ayan. So before we proceed to uh, the last topic for today, your stool culture, yes. Um, any questions? <clears throat> yes. Any clarifications? Clarifications. Again, uh, unsa tong alternative for ether? Ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate. Okay. Ethyl acetate. Very good. Again, what is the specific gravity of zinc sulfate for formalin preserved samples? 1.20. Okay. 1.20. Okay. Of course. And if fresh, 1.18. Fresh at 18. Do not forget that, mnemonic. Really help. Itabang na nako put fresh at 18. Okay. All right. Ayan. Sige. All right. So uh, if you don't have questions, we proceed now to the last topic for today, which is your stool culture. Now, stool culture, do not be confused or do not confuse this with the culture that you will perform also in bacteriology. Okay. Because there is culture for stool in bacte na put sa para. The difference lang is for bacte, stool culture is routine, especially in hospitals. Routine good stool culture for bacte. Whereas for para, no, in routine hospitals or 
uh, routine setting, this is not performed routinely, okay? So stool culture for parasitology is only performed if you want to confirm pagyod, no? Uh, especially for hookworm and strongy, or you want to test a drug against a particular parasite, and it's usually performed uh, sa mga high-end laboratories na or sa mga reference labs, research laboratories, okay? But in routine laboratories in hospitals, this is not routinely performed, okay? All right. Now, stool culture is primarily performed especially for the differentiation of hookworm and strongyloides because they by recall that hookworm and strongyloides their ova look similar okay so you cannot identify the two based on ova alone diba and true enough we identify them or differentiate the two uh, species are uh, two parasites through their larva diba you especially rhabditiform or filariform larva so if you want to um Identify talaga your stool na positive with an ova of hookworm or strongy, you then subject it to culture. Imong patubuon, no? Imong ipahatch ang ova nila para mahimong larva. Okay? Alright, because it's through the larva that we can identify the two parasites. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to culture your stools positive again with these parasites, you should not refrigerate it because uh, hookworms, especially hookworms, um, they are sensitive to cold temperatures. So if a muhang sample positive with hookworm ova, imong giref, possible na pag culture ni mo dili na mutubo okay or dili na mahimong larva ang ova okay it will not become a larva anymore all right if you refrigerate it that's for hookworm okay very sensitive sila to cold okay all right now we go now to the first uh method your coproculture and Beerman funnel technique so your positive stools your stools containing the ova of hookworm or strongy you mix it with moistened soil or granulated charcoal and then you then place it on top of a Beerman funnel the Beerman funnel consists of water nashay water and this water is in contact with your specimen and this will enhance or facilitate the hatching of your eggs okay and the migration also of the larva downwards okay and the larva will be recovered at the container here and from the container dira ka mukwag sample you get a sample from there place on a slide cover slip and then examine under the microscope okay advantage greater amount of stool that you can uh, use okay so mas pwedeng daghang parasites imong ma-recover and aside from that um you can also use soil as a specimen if you want to test if your soil no contains filariform larva of strongy bar hookworm, which will then confirm if the soil is a source of infection, a possible source of infection for hookworm or strongy. Okay, so that's coproculture Bayerman funnel technique. So you use a funnel basically. Okay, all right. Ayan. Next, we go now to the next method, your Harada Mori or your test tube culture method or the filter paper <clears throat> culture technique. I'm sure you performed this in your para before, no? So you use filter paper strips, no? Filter paper strips and then test tubes also. So what you do is, this is the um, kind of setup. Using your stool, about 0.5 to 1 grams, you smear the stool thinly, no? On the center of your filter paper. And then you place it on a test tube. Uh, the test tube already contains boiled or distilled water. So, so the same, the uh, distilled water or the water will move through the test strip or to the filter paper uh, through capillary action. So, musaka ang water through capillary action, and it will moisten, no, ilang iyang bason ang stool to facilitate, again, the hatching of the eggs para mahimong larva, okay? You keep this set up in the dark for 7 to 10 days, so lights off yung ganahan, okay? So, lights on, lights off, bakayo dear, charot. So, for Haradamori, lights off siya sa dark, okay? For 7 to 10 days, and you need to examine daily. You need to check if there is still water. Okay, full eye water, you need to put water talaga because the water will serve as to moisten no moisten the filter paper okay now after 7 to 10 days no you then examine uh, the bottom kaning water na naa sa ilalom okay sa ilalom sa tube this one okay and before examining it's recommended to immerse the tube you put the tube in hot water for at least 15 minutes for the purpose of killing the larvae because again diba recall we're looking at strongy hookworm and what is the mode of transmission of the two skin penetration now what if there are some accidents na may tabo no mabuak or whatever and then ma expose imong skin diba so pwede siya may source of infection so it's best na at least when you examine the larvae already killed okay so that they cannot be they cannot infect na in cases of infection in cases of accidents or whatever okay now for the larvae no kinsa man mga musaka o kinsa tong manaog so for filariform larvae na mo naog ra sa ilalom ra siya makuha that is your hookworm so hookworm larvae will move downwards whereas your strongyloides 
it can move downwards or upwards. Ayan. So basically, si hookworm kay bottom, yes. And then ang imuhang strongy kay versa. Charot, oh, di ba? If you know those terms, yes. Pwede nyo siya mnemonic. But if not, strongyloides is strong, di ba? Strong. So pwede siyang mu, saka, sa taas. Okay? Alright. Whereas your hookworm, sa ilanong mga siya padulong. Okay? Hookworm moves downwards. Strongyloides either moves upwards or downwards. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, in a way, kay since ma-recover man silang duha sa ilalom, sa, sa water, dali sa ilalom, so, dito na tamo examine. You don't need to examine at the top because both of the larvae of the two parasites can be recovered at the bottom. Diba? Okay. Ayan. So, that's for Harada Mori or the test tube uh, culture method, filter paper technique. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So, for these methods, as you can see, no, these are all Again, after strongy and hookworm. So the third one is agar plate culture for strongyloides stercoralis. So as you can see, this method is considered to be the more sensitive because as you can see, you use a lot more stool, two grams of fresh stool, and you use an agar plate. No, it's not mentioned kung unsa na agar na iuban na mugamar mugamit og nutrient agar na po iuban blood agar. Okay, now two grams of fresh stool you immediately place on the center of the agar plate, and then the plate you seal with tape to prevent infection, and then you let it uh, incubate at room temperature for two days. Some procedures will also put them in incubators, so depend lang. All right. Now in positive cases, what we're after are this one, the visible tracks, no, visible tracks of strongyloides on the surface of the ar of the agar. So it means that nag-move ang imuhang migrating, ni migrate imuhang strongy larva. So we first examine this under the microscope to check, no? Uh, to check if na by larva, no? Or to check if na ba yung mga tracks, okay? So basically, their scanning track dere is actually bacteria na ni grow. So pag move sa strongyloides, iyang gidala ang bacteria with with him, no? So nag-OBT sila, no? Naglaag sila. So basically, marasyag ka ng imong Ikaw ang uh, alima sa imong friend na bograt, no, na hubog, na naglakaw-lakaw mo, di ba? So, as you can see, dili na straight niyong, dili na straight niyong nilakwan, no, <laughs> naghiwi-hiwi na, okay? Alright, ayan, so mga galakaw from razor to tiki, yes, charot, okay, joke lang. Alright, so, inana ang concept po. Ang strong ang gidala ang bacteria with him, with him while nag-move siya. So, pagdala niya sa bacteria also, ni grow ang bacteria sa agar, okay? Alright, ayan. Okay, so muna siya, ang agar plate culture for strongyloides uh, stercoralis. Again, the positive result is, again, visible tracks on the surface of your agar plate. Okay, all right. So here's an example of the procedure. Again, a different procedure. So you prefer your culture media plate, no? Again, wala gi mention kung unsa. Pero nutrient agar plate is, it, it would suffice. And here's your sample, no? Stool sample. Place it at the center, okay? And then place a tape over it, okay? And then you place an incubator, and in a procedure. After incubation, you then examine under the microscope if na ba yung mga tracks. Okay, and if na kayo magit ang tracks, buslutan ni mo ang plate, uh, ang, ang tape, ang cover. Butang ka ni mo formalin, i mong i-flood ang surface of formalin again to preserve uh, the larvae. And then after that, you then use a uh, dropper, get a sample, put on a tube, and then sediment, concentrate, a centrifuge to concentrate, and then examine the sediment under the microscope and look for the larvae of strongyloides. Okay, all right, so that's for uh, the agar plate culture method for strongyloides. So for the previous methods, dears, these are all focusing on helminths. Now, we also have culture methods for protozoa. So using the different, these different culture media. Now, for culture media, for intestinal protozoa, you have first the boic and derbolavs, diphasic medium. You have balamuths, monophasic liquid medium. You have Cleveland colliers medium. And lastly, you have diamonds medium. Now, according to Strassinger, 6th ed, 6th edition, katun yung green na book for AUBF, diamonds medium is considered to be the culture media of choice for T. vaginalis. Okay? The culture media of choice for T. vaginalis, diamonds medium, according to Strassinger. But it's not only the, dili na mao ang culture medium sa T. vaginalis, na pailain. Okay? Pero ang media of choice daw is diamonds. That's according to Strassinger. Okay? 6th edition. Okay. Those are all for intestinal protozoa. Now, these mga culture media deers, uh, most of them are slant. No? Slant ang ilang appearance. Same sa imuhang bakte no sa citrate and they are usually egg based no based from eggs no and uh napos lang mga additional na mga extract like liver extract tissue extract depending again on the parasite or the protozoa's 
needs. Okay, all right. So those are for intestinal protozoa. Now, we also have culture media for the blood parasites. You have NNN medium, Novi McNeil Nicole for Leishmania and Trypanosoma. Your NNN medium is a blood agar. It's made up of defibrinated, please take note, defibrinated rabbit blood. Okay, so it's made up of defibrinated rabbit blood agar, ang imong NNN medium. And another is your Schneider's insect tissue culture medium, which is the recommended, recommended in vitro culture medium for Leishmania because it's more sensitive than NNN and it's made up of cells of Drosophila. Your Drosophila is your fruit fly. Okay, please take note. Drosophila, fruit fly, more sensitive, recommended in vitro culture of Leishmania. Your Schneider's insect tissue culture medium. Okay, please take note. Since we're talking about culture media, sige. Bacteta. Media of choice, culture media of choice for the isolation, identification of Vibrio species. In Samanto. TCBS, sir. Okay, very good. TCBS. Your TCBS uh, is. On sa may meaning sa TCBS nato? Thiosulfate, citrate, bile, so uh, salt. So okay. Salt. Okay, very good. That's correct. No, dapat complete. Thiosulfate, by thiosulfate. Citrate by, uh, 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 citrate by salt, sucrose, sucrose, agar. Very good. That's correct. TCBS. Ayo kalimutan na sucrose sa end, okay? TCBS. Okay, very good. That's the media of choice for the isolation identification of Vibrio. Yes, aid. Unsa ka ni mohang black aid? G, sir. Okay, very good. So, G. Okay. All right. So, that's the question. The culture media of choice for the isolation identification of Vibrio. But what if one question is the culture media of choice for the propagation of Vibrio? Unsaman. Propagation lang. Pampadaghan sa Vibrio. Peptone water. Okay. Peptone water, yes. Kulangan og gan. Okay. Alkaline. All right. Okay, very good. Alkaline, peptone, water, your APW. This is the culture media of choice if pampadaghan lang sa Vibrio for propagation, all right? But kung isolation, identification, TCBS. Okay, very good. Okay, so please take note of that question, dear. So, gina prepare tamo ni Dean Rodriguez sa October sa yung mga lecture sa Bakte Clean Camp. Okay, mahilig po ta siya mga, mahilig to siya mga side questions, sad. Okay, all right. Para ma-refresh po mo. Okay? All right. But for recommended in vitro culture for Leishmania, atong answer, Schneider's insect tissue culture medium. All right. So here's some pictures of your culture media. So here's an example of your Bowek Derbolab. So as you can see, yellow siya because it's egg-based, no? Based siya sa egg, no? Made up of egg siya. And you also have extracts there, uh, protein, a source of protein, protein extract. Okay? For NNN, again, defibrinated rabbit blood. So you can see it's a blood agar. And you have the Schneider's insect uh, tissue culture medium. Okay? All right. Ayan. All right. Okay. So basically, there's, uh, that's all for today. Yes, tomorrow we'll continue. Uh, before we end, yes, any questions? Okay. Any questions before we end? Anyway, all right. Sige. So any questions before we end? Sige. So again, uh, review muna. Review before we end. So the ganatang na chika, no? <laughs> so again, on sa to na parasite, again, ang um, ganahan o body cavities to live in. Mansonella. Okay, that's correct. Mansonella oh, okay. is an example. Pero siya ang tawag sa more classification niya na parasite. Okay, silozoic, silozoic. Okay, see, okay, silozoic. Very good. The type of host na again um. Once the parasite is inside, dili na siya mo develop further into latter stages. Paratenic. Okay, very good. Para, paratenic hosts. Okay, very good. Okay, this is the type of host na again, ang naaniya is larval stages as asexual reproduction lang sa parasite. Intermediate. 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 Very good. Intermediate hosts. Okay, again, oldest stay na to. IUT. Okay. Oh, diba? Dapat wala nang buffering. Di na mag-isep. Huwag nang mag-isep talaga. Okay? Next, you have again uh, the most common torch agent. CMV. CMV. Okay, very good. CMV. All right. Okay, again. Culture media of choice for your Vibrio isolation identification. TCV. Okay. 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 okay, very good. Very good. Don't forget about that. Okay, so again, Catholic, how much tool do we need? 50 size. Okay. 52. 60. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 milligrams. Okay, 60 milligrams. Dapat complete yung answer. Or equivalent to the size of a? 
Soybean. 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 Uh, soybean. 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 Don't forget, ang pea size is para sa direct pickle smear, okay? But for cat to take, medyo mas daghang stool ang needed, the size of a soybean. Okay, all right. Now, uh, for concentration techniques, okay? So, again, um, most commonly performed na to na concentration technique. <clears throat> formalin, F formalin. Okay. F E C T F E A C T. Okay. All right. Choice procedure if your uh, if your sample comes from animals. Samanto. <laughs> if animals ang atong source. A E C T. Okay. Okay. Very good. A E C T. Okay. All right. Again, uh, specific gravity of zinc sulfate. Kung fresh two samples. 1.18. 1.18. Fresh at 18. And if formalin preserved, you have 1.20. Oh, 1.20. Very good. Okay. Now, uh, for culture, again, kinsa tung larva na musaka sa taas? Strong G. Strong Okay, strong siya, di ba? Don't forget, strong siya. Munang kaya niya musaka sa taas. Okay. And for downwards, sa uh, ubus, ragin siya makita or muliho is? Bookworm. Bookworm. Okay, very good. Okay. <laughs> positive, uh, positive positive result nato for agar plate culture method. The night Okay, visible tracks on the surface of the agar. Okay, all right. Tapos, um, uh, again, the recommended in vitro culture for Leishmania. Sa itong gamiton? <clears throat> the Schneiders. Okay, the insect Schneiders insect 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 tissue medium. Insect and uh, your NNN medium is made up of? On sa man? Defibrinated blood agar. Okay, defibrinated rabbit. rabbit ha? Defibrinated rabbit blood agar. Concentration of formalin to preserve your helminth eggs and larvae. 10%. Okay, 10%. Very good. And for the cysts, you have? 5%. 5C, don't forget. Okay, all right. Ayan. So, I think, yes, Moto siya. Don't forget pa itong mga side questions, ha? Itong mga questions outside of para, okay? Especially that. Important na siya. Okay, all right. So, do you have any questions, dears, before we end? Okay. All right. Ako na-stop ko record, ha?